بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم العاقبة للمتقين أما بعد Respected brothers, alhamdulillah, today we had completed the 10th juz and in this juz we had completed Surah Al-Anfal and we had also read a good portion of Surah Al-Tawbah One of the things that we can see here in the portions that we had recited is the stress on having complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's something that each and every single one of us needs to develop to the highest degree. And in order for us to understand the concept of reliance, it's like basically having the full confidence that this person or this thing or this entity is going to get my job done. For example, those of us who uh, sponsor relatives, from abroad and uh, you know we're having trouble trying to sponsor them so what we normally do is we approach the local MP and uh, get a letter from them tell them to uh, contact the consulate in whatever country it is that we're sponsoring our loved ones from or our relatives from and we walk out that office thinking up to Mirakam Hogya okay this is the way we think that now my job is done Okay, I've got nothing to worry about and alhamdulillah everything's a okay. Basically we have so much confidence in that pen of the MP that we feel that inshallah there's no way that this thing is going to fail now. They're, like all the obstacles are gone and that one letter that he's going to send is going to solve my problem now. Hey, th- that level of confidence that we have, that is what we need to de- develop with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask ourselves, do we really have that with Allah? Let's really ask ourselves that the confidence that we are supposed to have in Allah as Muslims, that once I have done my two rakat, once I have made dua, inshallah my job is done. Do we have that confidence? And if we don't, alhamdulillah, this is the month to achieve it. And we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses this concept in different ways. For example, in the beginning of our recital today, or towards the beginning, we're talking about the Battle of Badr, and the Battle of Badr was something that was not forecasted, it was not scheduled, it was not something that was decided upon by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It, it happened totally by accident, okay, totally unexpectedly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went with his companions, 313 of them, to intercept a caravan led by Abu Sufyan, only for that whole incident to turn into an all-out war led by the Quraysh. It was totally unexpected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes it very clear that He created this situation. He makes it very clear. If you were to try and decide on a date, then you would differ upon the date when we need to go into battle. وَلَكِنِّي يَقْضِيَ اللَّهُ أَمْرًا كَانَ مَفْعُولًا why did this happen? It's so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can decide an affair that is already meant to be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now come to the point where truth is going to prevail over falsehood and the whole of Arabia is going to know it. I mean, if you think about it, look at the math here. Uh, the Quraysh are 1,000, the Muslims are 313, the Muslims are numbered approximately three times. Mathematically speaking, there is no way the Muslims stand a chance. You should be beaten within the, the first 15 minutes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show something here. That really, it's not about our resources. It's not about what we have access to. It's about our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at the instructions He's giving the believers. That now when they're on the first lines, or in the front lines I should say, إِذَا لَقِيتُمْ فِئَةً فَثْبُتُوا وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And this is something that is applicable to all of us in every facet of life. Allah is saying to the believers now, when you're going to encounter the army, you're going to encounter the other group, remain firm. فَثْبُتُوا Have full confidence. Even though you're outnumbered by three times, stay put. Don't even think of turning your backs and running. And while you're staying put, while you're staying firm, فَثْبُتُوا وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا 
Start mentioning the name of Allah abundantly. Say your subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, because it's all about Allah at the end of the day. وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And now when you're going to execute the task, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ Okay? Now obey Allah and the Messenger. Whatever instructions they're giving, make sure you follow them through without compromise. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا And at the same time, do not start disputing with each other. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا And that's something that we need to learn as a community. That when we are doing a community project or when we are now engaged in some type of collective activity, we are going to have people in the group who have a different nature, they have a different way of looking at things. Uh, they don't have, I mean, they're not at the same wavelength as, as us. And should that be a cause for us to start going head on head with them and start having an argument with them and start thinking with the, about this, you know, forget this, I don't need this and I just walk away. Should that be grounds for that? Allah is telling us no. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا You know, the thing about us, and I, I don't think we can really dispute this, we as a community are just too over-emotional. Right? We get emotional over the smallest of things. We don't use intellect. We don't think things, things through with a cool mind. And this is what the media loves. The moment we get all emotional and ballistic, really, I've done this a billion times because I do so many presentations and I make PowerPoints. Whenever I'm now looking for pictures on Google, okay, to instill in my slides, and uh, you know, you're, you're Googling Muslim community or Muslim brothers or something like that, you always get pictures of Muslims going absolutely ballistic. And then you have Muslims shouting and okay, flags up, death to America, and 911 is going to come your way, or something like that. The most horrendous of pictures, they all come up. Okay? This is what they love. They love to see us in this condition so that they can present it. Hey, Islam, religion of peace. Hey, look at this. That's what you call peace. So we don't think things through. What we need to do is really cool down, stop getting over emotional, and act upon what Allah is saying here. Wala tanazau. Don't start fighting amongst yourselves. Because what's going to happen as, as a result? Fatav shalu wa tadhabari hukum. You'll lose your strength. You will lose your courage. Fatav shalu. You lose courage, and your strength is going to go. So therefore, be patient. Wasbiru. And don't be like those people when it comes to the Quraysh. They're coming out of their homes, batara, showing off, you know, even walking with a bit of this. You know, we're going to show them today. Okay, we're really, really with full of pride, full of arrogance. Allah is saying, don't be like those people. Never even entertain arrogance in our thoughts, in our minds, let alone our actions. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ خَرَجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بَطَرَ وَرِئَاءَ الناس. And they want to show all the people. وَيَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ and they are stopping and averting others from the path of Allah. Now, what happens going forward? This is very interesting. One of the things that the Quraysh feared was that on the way to Badr, they are going to pass the territory of Banu Bakr. And Banu Bakr is a tribe that they don't get along with. So there is a level of apprehension. How are we going to cross this territory. Shaitan is right at their service, right in the door. Okay, and he comes in the form of Suraqa bin Malik, who's a tribal leader, and he gives them the assurity. La ghaliba lakumul yawma min al-nas. Because Shaitan's job is to make sure that we just jump into the pool of destruction, even if it's in the shallow end, and eventually let us swim to the deep end and drown. That's basically his job. So he himself comes in the form of Suraqa bin Malik. He's a jinn. He can adopt shapes and adopt appearances. And that's common with jinn. Still happens till today. I mean, you have a, a very big portion of the community that directly wor worships shaitan. This is not a mystery. And if we have, are not acquainted about this, you know, it's good that you don't know about this. But it does happen. I don't have to make this up. It really happens. 
where people, especially in the entertainment industry, who we all look up to, are you know, very uh, well indulged and well engaged in worshipping who we know as shaitan. Okay, and he makes his appearances whenever he wants to, however he wants. It still happens till to this day, and it will continue happening. So shaitan, he makes his appearance. He goes to Abu Jahal, goes to the guys, don't worry guys, don't worry about it. Cross this territory, I'm with you, I'm the tribal leader, I'm Suraqa bin Malik. Wa inni jarul lakum, and I'm your protector, don't worry about it. Anyone from the tribe, they see you crossing, they say, hey, that's a Quraysh. But then they'll see me. Hey, I'm the Suraka bin Malik. He's taken them into his custody or into his protection. Okay, don't touch them. So shaitan now is leading the way towards their destruction. Finally, when they get to the battlefield and the battle begins, فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَتِ الْفِئَتَانِ نَكَصَ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ Okay, when the two armies are now encountering each other, the Muslims versus, versus the non-Muslims, and shaitan personally witnesses a cavalry of 500 soldiers amongst the angels. Oh, so angelic soldiers led by Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Another cavalry of 500 led by Mikail alayhi salatu wasalam. Naqasa ala aqibay. Now he moves back. And he makes it very clear. Inni bari'un min ma... Inni bari'un. Right? So he, he makes it clear to these people نَكَسَ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَهِ وَقَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّمَّا What's the verse? وَقَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكُمْ إِنِّي أَرَى مَا لَا تَرَوْنَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ He says, listen, I told you, I'm your protector, but I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go back on my word, and I've got nothing to do with you. Adios amigos, and off he goes. Okay? Immediately, he runs. And he says, I can see what you can't see. Inni aramala taron. I can see what you can't see. And you know what? I'm sorry, but I really fear Allah. Okay, so I'm going. <laughs> That's shaitan. Okay. Inni Allah. I fear Allah. So I'm sorry. You know, have a good time. I'll join you for the celebrations. Okay. I just gotta, I have to step out for a second. And off he goes. And that's typical of shaitan. Just takes us by the hand, takes us by the finger, and you know, just makes us think, you know, let's, let's just look at this. What, what is the fuss all about? Let's just listen to this at one time. I need to do some research. <laughs> okay? I need to do some research. I need to understand what this, this haram is all about. Let me just take that little sip. You know, I need to taste how haram this alcohol is. Okay? Or let me take that one injection. Or let's take that little drag. Okay? All he does is just make sure that the action has been initiated and let that person do his course then. And that's where we have to pull the brakes. Don't even think of touching haram. Remember, it's haram for a reason. It's haram because it's going to destroy us spiritually, let alone you know, psychologically and even physically at times, depending on what the sin may be. So there's no need for us to test and see and experiment what this is all about. That's the trick of shaitan, just to get us in there, through the doors. Once we're in the doors, he scrams and he knows that guy's on the road to hell now. And his job is accomplished. And that's basically what it's all about. He wants to make sure that each and every single one of us burn. Okay, so this is one thing that we have to understand about shaitan. He's not our friend. So don't take him up as a friend. But rather what we need to do is make sure that we stay firm on the commands of Allah as Rasulullah has demonstrated. And you know we say this all the time, the commands of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah please let's take it up on ourselves to learn what these instructions are all about. And it doesn't matter what other people may perceive of us. Look, even the Muslims at that time when they're on their way to Badr now, they've decided, okay, we're going to go through with this battle. The hypocrites and the people who are weak in faith, they're criticizing the Muslims. They're getting news as news comes through. I mean, they were not getting feed on their Twitter and they were not getting live Facebook updates. I mean, whatever news is coming their way. All of a sudden they're saying, إِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضْ غَرَّهَا أُولَا 
The munafiqeen and the people that are weak in faith are saying, those people, their faith has totally deceived them. These people have totally lost it. They're out of their minds. They think they're going to be victorious with some help of God. Okay, their religion has deceived them. And here comes the punchline. Here comes the thing that we're stressing on. Allah is saying, despite what those people are saying, despite the negative criticism, despite the, the negative perceptions, whoever is going to rely on Allah, recognizing this is the command of Allah, my duty is to fulfill it, follow it through, and we rely on Allah, that inshallah my work is going to be done. Allah is saying, He is mighty, He is wise. There's nothing that can overcome Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recognize this. There's nothing that can overrule and overpower and override Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So hence, if there's any entity that we need to be conscious of, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's no one else. And then, inshallah, when we're working together as a community, acting upon these principles, we're following the commands of Allah as demonstrated by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're not fighting with one another. We're being patient with one another. We're thinking things through with a cool mind. Then, inshallah, we will see the hearts of everyone become united. This is what Allah tells us about the, Quran, about the Ansar. وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah united their hearts. And He's telling the Prophet ﷺ, لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ If you were to spend every penny found on the face of this planet, everything, all your resources, in trying to unite this community that was so disunited, the Aws and the Khazraj, which later is known as the Ansar, they just couldn't tolerate each other, and all of a sudden they've become closer to, closer to each other than their own blood brothers. Allah is saying, Allah is the one that united their hearts. If you were to spend everything to unite their hearts, you would never be able to unite, unite them. Rather, Allah united them. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ This is the ultimate thing that we need to accomplish. We'll only accomplish this once we are working to the best of our ability towards communal harmony and communal uh, unity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it happen provided we are sincere. They were sincere and it happened. If Allah could do it for them, why can't He do it for us? And one of the things, keep this in mind, when it comes to the reliance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we rely on Allah when carrying out His orders. And those orders need to be confirmed. Okay, one of the things that we don't want to fall victim to is that, well, put it like this. Our deen, our religion is not dictated by dreams, it's not dictated by visions, it's not dictated by paranormal experiences. Our deen is dictated by the book of Allah, which is the confirmed instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's there. Okay, so whatever we're going to act upon on, in the name of religion, it has to be sourced back to the book of Allah and it has to be explained by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and in order for us to understand its application we look at the Sahaba radiallahu najma'in the dreams if we have a dream in which we are getting a message which is in conflict with what Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa are telling us do not perceive that to be divine inspiration it is in reality demonic insinuation that's what it is. It's a waswasa. I mean, not too long ago, I remember reading about uh, an incident in the East where one person had a dream that he is now slaughtering his son. And he perceived this to be uh, the dream that Ibrahim والسلام, had. And he went ahead and just slaughtered his son. Thinking, well, this is divine inspiration. And obviously, he's going to get slaughtered in jail then. So the thing is, we do not get revelation. The purpose of dreams basically, it's yes, to give us some good tidings, glad tidings, but not new religious instructions. Our deen is not based on that. Because if it was, what's the difference between us and the previous communities such as Catholicism? What is the difference then? 
So we are basing our religion on hardcore facts established from the Book of Allah and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And finally, I finish off with this: that at no point do we take our sights away from Allah. The moment we take our sights away, that is when Allah subhanahu wa taala moves away from us. And look at this: if you look at all the battles the Muslims had to fight in defense. Badr, Uhud, Ahzab. Hey, these are the big ones. And then the, so many small ones in between. The Muslims, even like, for example, uh, what's uh, it, um, there's another one that with uh, the Romans. Muta, the Battle of Muta. Okay, so in every single one of them, the Muslims are totally outnumbered. For example, the Battle of Muta, there's only 30,000 Muslims versus... 200,000 Byzantines. Okay, 200,000. That, I mean, they're they almost outnumbered by seven times here. Okay, or even 70 times. Not seven times, they're outnumbered by 70 times. But even then the help of Allah was there and the Muslims were victorious because their sights were always on Allah. But the tables turned in Hunayn. After the takeover of Makkah, the Muslims had now come into Makkah, 10,000 in total. There's only 2,000 population in, in Makkah. So it, basically they've taken over the city without incident, a major incident. And later, after the takeover, they receive word of a, a, an attack that's being planned by the Hawazin. The Hawazin, this is uh, the tribes that are located in Taif. They felt that the Muslims, now that they've taken over the main city, we might be next, so we need to launch an offensive. The Prophet ﷺ rounds up his men, and in total takes 12,000. The Hawazin were only 4,000. This is the first time that they're going to engage in a major battle where they outnumber the enemy. And even the likes of Abu Bakr anhu was thinking that today, based on numbers, there's no way we can lose. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنَ Remember the day of Hunayn. إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ When your big numbers, they start amazing you. But you know what happened? فَلَمْ تُغْنِ عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا It never availed you in any way. As soon as they get into the valley of Hunayn, they don't even see this coming their way. They are ambushed by the Hawazin who are hiding in the mountains. They have a barrage of arrows coming their way. They're totally caught off guard. And 4,000 make 12,000 Muslims run for their lives. The only people sticking in that valley is Rasulullah wasallam, Abu Sufyan, who just recently converted to Islam, and the Prophet's uncle Abbas. These are the only three people who are left out of 12,000. Okay? The Muslims, their sights had gone away from Allah, and now it's on the means. So Allah taught everyone a big lesson. إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ فَلَمْ تُغْنِ عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا It never came in any use to you whatsoever. وَضَاقَتَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحْبَتَ Earth became restricted upon you despite it being so vast. Uh, you just didn't know what to do. You just ran for your lives. Like the whole world is just caved in on you. Okay? ثُمَّ وَلَّيْتُمْ مُدْبِرِينَ Then you had run away turning your backs. Then finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent His help. The Muslims regrouped. They've now reconfigured, you can say, their intentions. And now they march forward with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sends an army of angels as well. And the enemy is put out. But the thing is, the moment our, we turn away from Allah and our tawakkul, our reliance is in something else, Allah will entrust us to it. And guess what? We have just now embarked on the road to failure. So hence I finish off with this Let us all have full confidence In the, in the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And never feel shy In connecting with Allah And believing that Allah will solve all my problems And solve all of my, all of my affairs May Allah give us all ability to understand Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk